Uh, last year in Corda, on the surface of it, this bill sounds pleasant enough, citing increased regulation for the approved housing body sector and the establishment of an independent regulator with functions to include establishing and maintaining a register of approved housing bodies, or AHBs, and also preparing draft standards, monitoring and assessing a compliance with by approved housing bodies, including undertaking investigations. However, once you dig deep, deep, you unearth what seems to be a cover for both the government's own failings in the, in the provision of housing for its citizens, as well as an open invitation to bring in more private investors into the property market. The bill as presented here today will mean regulating and monitoring within the improved housing body sector will be duplicated. The Housing Department's stated rationale for introduce, introducing statutory regulation is one, ensuring the governance and financial viability of the sector, two, safeguarding the state's contribution towards approved housing bodies in relation to housing assets, and three, providing assurance to tenants, the public and investors. All this is proposed despite the fact that the Housing Agency already exists to do just about what the Bill proposes. Draft standards have already been drafted for approved housing bodies. A voluntary vo vo code of conduct is already enacted. Monitoring and assessing compliance is undergoing thorough through the, through the housing agency, while the agency has a re registry of approved housing bodies in the country. So why the duplication and, why, and the establishment of another quango with the powers of the housing agency already has? Why not statutorily, statutorily enhance the powers of the housing agency, increase the number of staff within it, which has been proposed for the, for the establishment of a regulator anyway, and widen the RTB's remit to protect tenants under, under approved housing bodies and increase tenant rights under the agency? It could only mean one thing, which is that the government is attempting to attract private finance into the country through private investors. This way, the government can keep social housing off the exchequer books and hand over even more responsibility to the, to the sector, thereby reducing their burden of the provision of social housing for people in the country. In the country. Finn Gael really haven't learned anything from the past decade or two, where private entities speculated over the housing market, causing a catastrophic recession, leading us to where we are now, which is an over-speculated market, increased financialization of home ownership, and, uh, and, the, and the private market is it's finding, finding its feet again, while the number of homeless families has increased by 178 per cent since June 2015, and where more than one in three people in emergency accommodation is a child. Finn Gael has learned to be cunning in the way it increases the role of private finance in Ireland, and this bill today is clearly a smokescreen to do just that while covering themselves by saying it is to protect tenants' rights. Traditional grant funding of approved housing bodies by the Exchequer has been replaced with increased use of loan finance. That is the fact, and yes, and yes, as a result, there are few challenges for the sector in terms of attracting funding to increase the number of units growing. However, loan finance is not the answer to the ongoing housing crisis. In fact, now more than ever do we need a national social housing programme because the greater role the loan finance has, the less of a role the government will play in its duty to provide housing to its citizens. Furthermore, recent changes by the CSO Eurostat to reclassify Tier 3 approved housing bodies, the largest ones in terms of housing units, as general government sector means their expenditure will go on the government's balance sheet. Loans taken by approved housing bodies are expected to be £1,683 by 2019, which is an increase of 469 per cent from 2016. Clearly relying solely on approved housing bodies and loan finance to make up the housing numbers is not sustainable. I believe approved housing bodies were only ever meant to dominate the markets like the private sector has. They are there to, to provide a supporting role to the so social housing sector and to cater for niche housing, niche housing needs. It is clear that the government are angling for approved housing bodies and the private sector to dominate and eventually sideline social housing initiatives. Just look at the scale. The Department estimates that approved housing bodies have the capacity to deliver one-third of the 47,000 new social housing units that are to be targeted up to 2021. That is quite a sizable chunk and will no doubt increase in line with the availability of loan finance in the country as well. While I agree with the proper and effective regulation, I believe it must be done for the right reasons, by the appropriate authorities with the resources necessary to monitor the implementation. We see a lot of bills come through this House and, once passed, never get implemented due to resource constraints. 
That is why I do not understand why existing powers of the Housing Agency and the interim regulator within the Housing Agency cannot be expanded to do what this bill is attempting to do. Furthermore, the right entities must be regulated, and I find it interesting that local authorities have been largely left out of the question of increased light regulation altogether. The Government, while forcing duplicate re regulation in other sectors, continues to fail to regulate its own stock. The, the RTB still has no authority over local authority housing or the ability to protect local authority te housing tenants. If the Government is so concerned about tenant rights in this bill, why not back the RTB and enhance protections there? Approved housing bodies are required to adhere to the compliance framework, which again is regulated under the Voluntary Regulation Code, managed by the Regula Regulation Office of, and the Housing Agency. Approved housing, housing bodies must also go through various through rigorous reporting with insurance companies, but when it comes to local authorities, they can just walk in and do what they like. What compliance standards do they have to comply with and, those and who is regulating them? We know that across the, across the House here, constituents come to our offices with concerns over the standard of the local authority housing, with local authorities not responding to the individual's housing needs or responding on time to the repair that needs fixing. Furthermore, approved housing bodies are required to have a sinking fund, a fund which allows them to continue to manage their housing stock if it happens to go bust, three times the amount of what local authorities are required to have. And I have to say, in, in re re relation to um, Deputy Boyd Barrett, I would actually disagree with you in terms of the approved housing bodies because there actually is more input from tenants to have problems resolved because the approved housing bodies are resourced to do that, where the local authorities are not. And that's your responsibility. You're the government. You don't resource the local authorities to actually have people to actually deal with the tenants that they get, that they have under the responsibility. And that's the problem. And that's one of the selling points you use for approved housing bodies that they're so great that they, they react with customers and they deal with the tenants and they and they have a proactive way of dealing with it. Simply because local authorities aren't given the funding and don't have the funding to do the same thing. And that's the problem. Now it may be different in Dublin. Uh, granted, and uh, because definitely there is a different regime amongst all local authorities across the country, and that's, that is a, a problem. But certainly in Donegal, the approved housing bodies do have more proactive role in terms of tenant management uh, than the local authority does. But that's because the local authority isn't funded to do it and isn't required to do it, and that's, that is a real problem. And I think you would have. Local authority housing would be a lot better managed if it had the same responsibilities in relation to them. And the, crux of, the crux of the issue lies with the Bill's main goal, which is to, ha is to have approved housing bodies subsidise the private sector by buying private units to turn them into social housing. And if approved housing bodies are subsidising the private market, the private market is profiting off the state. Meanwhile, the state fails to build on its own stock and increases the role of loan finance to address the housing needs of people in the country. Appropriate regulation where it is needed. Regulating what should be regulated by the appropriate body should be central to any piece of legislation. However, this bill fa fails to appropriately regulate where regulation is re really needed, which should be at the existing bodies that already manages the various aspects of the housing, housing sector. And I have to say, it is, when it's already been done by the, the housing body, why are we bringing in new legislation? It doesn't make any sense. And th this house would be better spent dealing with stuff that can make a difference rather than change, bringing in legislation just for this, this reason. So it's less about reassuring the public or the tenants in approved housing body units and more about re reassuring private investors that they hold a special place in this government's heart. Thank you. Uh,